Hey Travis kiddos and families, um, I'm going to walk you through how to get on to the resources on Launchpad. I'm going to go through the must do's first and then into the may do's. If you don't know how to get to this Launchpad screen, you can go to travisusd.org and click on Launchpad. That'll take you right to it. Um, if you're having trouble with logging in, you can contact Kimberly Gunn. That window will always pop up. I'm going to log in as a student to show you what you have access to. So here um, you can see the learning resources. So that is going to be our main hub, especially for our must-dos. Um, so here, Connect Ed McGraw-Hill, this is our reading program. So you'll find Wonders is the name of our program, but it's under Connect Ed. That's McGraw-Hill's um, name for their program. So. Uh, here, I'm going to click Launch. This is the first screen you're going to find. And when you launch it, um, a few icons will come up. So you see the to do, words to know, write, games, and read. The must do things are going to be under the read. So you click it. Read and it'll talk to you. Um, so the uh, very first icon here under read is where you're gonna find the reading writing workshop book and that is where all of our information is gonna come from. I'll come back to all of the other options later for the may do's, um, but first let me open this. Um, it will immediately open up to this week's story. The story of a robot inventor is this week's story. Um, if you need to find other pages, you can do that a couple of ways. You can either click back. So here are the word lists with the phonics skill. Here are the sight words. Here is the essential question, the opening of the chapter. And you can even go back farther into last week's work. Um, but if you click, you can click around forward and backward this way to get to anything you need. There's also a screen at the bottom. You can type in a specific page number. You just click in that. So if I wanted to go to page 159, uh, let's go 158 to 159. I can do it just by clicking and hitting enter and it takes me right to this page. Um, when I'm done with this story or this screen, I can just close that tab um, and it will take me back to my main Wonders curriculum area. So I'm going to come back later to the other stories and the games and the other things on here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this open for now and go back to my Launchpad tab. Um, for math, you can find under Think Central you're going to find our math information and curriculum. So here, if you have any things to do, um, that would be here on this tab. But our main um, must-dos are going to be under library, my library. So I click my library, and then I'm going to go to student edition. So in the must-dos, that's what we've listed um, for you to work on. So student edition, it comes up here. We're working in volume B currently. Um, so Math in Focus is the name of the <laughs> curriculum book, just like uh, Wonders is our reading. Math is Math in Focus, even though that's not what the icon is called. That's okay. So here we have the cover of the math uh, textbook. So you can find, again, you can find the page you need in a couple of ways. There's a go-to page up here and there's a contents page here. Um, I like to view two pages at a time, so I like to click on the two pages. Um, so if I go to contents, I can scroll down and since we are in chapter 15 right now, you can look in chapter 15, calendar and time, and um, you can click to any of the pages um, or lessons you want. And again, you can use the arrows on the right and left to get around to whatever page you need to do. Now you can't type in these, so you're gonna have to either talk about it with your child or write something down on a piece of paper. Um, if you want to go back, let's see, I'm gonna go back here. 
um, you again, you can find another page. So, oh, maybe we're on lesson two. It'll bring you right to lesson two. If you want to go to a specific page number, say I want to go to page 150, I can click that, and now I'm in the finishing up the mental math strategies chapter, chapter 14. Um, so that's a couple of ways that you can get to the um, the the textbook page numbers, the student edition page numbers in um, this book. Okay, let me go back. So those are the must-dos. Pretty easy. Only two areas you need to go there. So again, um, for the must-dos, wonders, read. read, and that first icon will be this week's stories and pages for the must-dos. Think Central, you go to uh, My Library, Student Edition, Grade 1, Volume B to get you to where you need to be for um, the textbook. So let's talk about the may do's. The may do's are the things if you have more time, if you haven't gotten to your full 30 minutes a day, if you want to explore more, um, those are gonna be under, uh, well, you can look in a few areas. So let's start with read. read. So here you will have, this is our leveled reader story of the week. This week, every leveled reader is called the Wright Brothers, learning about the Wright Brothers making the planes, Wilbur and Orville. Pretty uh, interesting and exciting information in there. Um, so if you click on that, a new window will come up and you'll be able to read the story. So they're at different levels, so you might see different words than are in your story. Um, but again, you flip through the pages, it'll even read it to you. Chapter 2. What did the Wright brothers do? So there are options there, and again, you can um, choose a page down here. So that is the leveled reader. I'm going to leave that. These are the decodable reader stories. If you want more, I'm just scanning over with my, well, I have a touchpad. You might have a mouse, but <laughs> scrolling over. So these are the decodable reader stories of the week, and here is the full decodable reader. So if you want to, you can click on one of those, and it'll open up in a new window, and you can read through there. You see um, all the pages for this week are available so you can flip back and forth um, through this week's stories. Um, and you can find more in here if you wanna go back to other ones, other stories from previous weeks. Thomas Edison Inventor is our literature anthology story of the week. So this one's a little bit more difficult. It's very rich in text. Um, and the words are above target for our grade level. So you're going to find the story in here. Again, these little sound icons, it'll read it to you. Um, and then at the end of the story, I'm going to keep clicking through. Um, at the end of the story, excuse me, <laughs> you're going to um, find the meet the author. Um, and you can talk about the retail steps, which are, if you're doing the workbook pages, those are, um, you can use that story for that. Uh, and then you have the extra stories for the week are under genre, the poetry. So the, at the end of this week's literature anthology story, we have two this week. Um, and you can check out the Make Connections. You can even open this up and type in an answer. Um, so lots to do there. Um, then uh, you have some other, so you can also jump right to the, the extra stories in the literature anthology, the shorter ones. They're usually poetry or a little bit more information. Um, this is the whole literature anthology here. So those are this week's reads. Uh, and if I close that, I can go to Games. And you can see, if you open one of these windows, it'll pop up this game, hopefully. <laughs> there we go. Um, and so this one is comprehension. So this one's about, about problems and solutions. So again, the sound buttons will read it to you. And then you can answer the question. So read this part, read the question, click on one of the answers, and then you check to go to the next one. So... Um, we can click on an answer, check. Great job. It'll talk to us, and then you can go to the next question. So you have to answer it and check to go to the next question. There's also um, our uh, some reading practice here. So this is working on um, the alliteration, which is this week's uh, well, literacy and phonics skill here. So um, again, choose an answer, check, and then go to the next question. 
Um, there's fluency. So for this, oh, that'll make me get Adobe. That's interesting. Um, for that one, when you open it, you can um, read words as many as you can in the minute. So they, um, and it'll track it for you. So you have to read them out loud and be honest um, and click on whatever word you end on so that it gives you a total. Grammar, um, I'm only going to go through this one and then you can explore the rest. This one, it's going to have you work on adjectives, just like last week. So putting in the correct adjective, you click and drag. Okay, um, and if, since I am not reading carefully, if you check. That's not it. If Try you, again. If you don't get it correct, it'll help you out. Okay, so um, those are some of the games. They go on and on, tons of games every week. You can explore those as much as you want. You can right. write. It'll pull up something for you to, um, some of them they have, you can trade, you can write with your mouse or touchpad, which is a little tough for me. Um, but there are also things that you can type in, which is great. Um, and then these little icons back down here. If your teacher has assigned you something to do, it will pop up here. And then my tests, you can find if you have any tests to take here, it'll pop up for you to do. Um, and that's a lot of stuff that you can do on, on um Wonders, Connect Ed. Um, then here, back to Think Central. So again, I'm in my library, and the uh, virtual manipulatives are really cool. So here, you find your virtual manipulatives. So if you want to use objects to count, you can, um, it's a little noisy, I'll turn my sound down. <laughs> you can enjoy the noises at home. So you can count as many things as you need, you can line them up, and maybe you wanna add some more of a different thing, then you can add more, okay? Um, and then you can count them up, you can type in a number, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine objects, check. Correct. Um, so it's very interactive. I'm going to use the broom to clear it. Um, and if I want to do a different activity, I can compare objects. So let's see if I do three and four, line them up. So I can compare how many? Three, four. If I click on the question mark, it has a greater than, equal to, or less than symbol. So you put in the symbol that would work. So three is less than four and check it. Um, so again, then you have add, you can do this, three plus three, and then you can line them up. And then you can type in the number here. So add them. You can type in the answer and it shows you the fact family information. Oh, since I typed in the answer and pushed add, it now won't let me <laughs> check. But you can do the check button there too. So you have all of these different things that you can do, subtract, same thing. So clicking on them. So here, um, when you want to subtract, you can either type in the number or you can click subtract and then start taking them away by clicking on them again. Okay, um, and then if you want to type in the answer, there are two left. Whoops, then I just added one more <laughs> by accident. Okay, so then I'm gonna clear that. I'm gonna go back to the menu here. So you have a ton of different things to do. You have number bonds. So when you click on the number bonds, you can put in the parts, part and whole. You can use the objects to do that. Um, and then always check to see if you're correct. Um, you have the number bonds. You also have the number balance, which is really helpful. So you want to balance both sides. So seven and four. So if I do 10 right now, they are not equal. So you could do greater than, less than, or equal to. But if I change this, let's see, I'm going to erase. You can use this little eraser button. If I do six and four, with 10. It balances out. Now you can add more than one to each side, but you're going to have to add them all up. So if you want to add three numbers, that's good practice. Here you have the buttons. Um, we do this in class just with adding and subtracting and putting the symbol in the middle. So this is great, a great visual to help you with those. Um, if you want to do base 10 blocks, that's a great one for addition and subtraction right now. So these you can just show. Here are your tens, here are your ones. You can line them up. 
Okay. Other forms, they'll show you how to write the word, the expanded form, and the standard form. Um, now this one, let's see, when you go to, you can compare them, putting some on the top. So if I did 22 compare with 21, you can put in the symbol and you can line them up to show. So which symbol would go in that place? 22 is greater than 21. Um, so that's one way to work on compare. If you want to add, so you need to get, oops, ah, sorry, I'm clicking buttons. <laughs> um, you're gonna click, so if I have this, I'm gonna line them up, and then I'm gonna add, so I have 12 and two. If I add them, oh, it already regrouped it for me. So it is, equal to 14. I found on mine I have to put in more ones than 10 in order to open up the tens the next time. Last time I didn't have tens available. There might be a way to do it. If you find out how to do it, fantastic. <laughs> so here if I add 24, 25, no, nope, let's do 24. 24 plus 16 Okay, so let's line them up. When I want to add, um, so it's going to automatically uh, regroup for me if I click this button. So here I have three tens, one, two, three, and all of my ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if I click regroup, it'll make a ten for me. So now I have four tens or forty. Ta-da! So um, you can regroup both ways, okay? So if I want to take apart the tens, I can. If I want to make a ten, I can. So that's helpful in the add and subtract. So again, you have to um, put in your items. So here I'm going to go to 12, and then I'm going to subtract and then click them to take them away. So I'm going to take, take away two, and I'm left with 10. So then, let's see. Oh, and it didn't open up my tens for me. So you're gonna, you can put in a number as well, um, and then subtract and. So then you can type in the answer to check. So that's a great way to use these. Um, then you also have num oops, number lines. So here you can do addition. So three plus boink boink two equals five. So you can do that. You can use the number line on your own. Um, you can click to the side to make the number line go up. You can add, you can subtract, you can skip count. So I'm going to skip count by threes, and I'm going to count to, let's do to 24. So it's going to show the jumps. Okay, so that's one way that you can practice skip counting with um, the number line. You can also explore, lots to do there. Um, there are graphs. So just like I showed you yesterday with the graphing, here, this is really cool. So you count, you add in how many rows you need. So if you wanna do three rows of items, I have set up the graph features. I've put the numbers in on the side. Um, oh, and you can put those numbers in. I'm gonna take those out, because I like to have the grid lines on there. Okay, so then how many things you want so you can show it in a bar. I'm in the bar graphs currently. So three, four, and two. So you can compare here. Um, and then if you want to show, so these are two or three elephants, and these are two, uh, four apples, and these are two uh, bananas. So you can do that. Um, that way you can title it. Uh, you can also um, do... So again, you can change the item. I'll show you how I did that. So however many you want. When I click in this button below to label the item, you have all different kinds of objects here. And when you hover over it, it shows more options. You can also just type in a name. So if you want to put in a month. 
So if you're um, if you are comparing birthdays, so three birthdays in January, then you can go to the next. You can type in a month. Um, so this is the bar graph. You can show a picture graph. So um, you have to choose your rows first, and then um, so you can type in what and how many. So three of, let's see, what should we do? Let's do three oranges and it'll show the picture. So here um, we can do however many feathers. So you can do the picture graph. If you want it to go vertical, so this is going horizontally right now, you can just switch, click on that button and it'll go to vertical. Um, you have pictographs, you have line graphs and line plots, lots of options there. Um, and then again, you have, you can work on geometry and shapes. You can do some measurements. So this is our balance scale. So you can put objects in there um, to compare. Um, so right now it's not balanced. Put in one more and it's balanced. You can do um, clocks. So this is perfect for our chapter right now. So put in the time. Okay. Um, you can do the calendar, which is great for right now. And you can do money, which is great for right now. So you just add in um, whatever you want in terms of money and then show. You can count it up and type in how much money that is. So here I have one dime, two nickels, and five pennies. So ten uh, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So $0.25. Ta-da! So um, a lot you can do here. Really awesome. Um, plenty to play with. Now this is its own window, so I'm going to close it. Now I'm going back here. So you have access to Khan Academy, you have access to Twig Science. Um, we don't have Accelerated Reader open right now. You have code.org, so maybe you could, if you're in these classes or if your class pops up, you can click on code.org and log in there. Super cool. Um, we do that in class, so you should know that. Starfall is a great website for reading and math and science, all different kinds of things. Um, Twig Science is our curriculum, so I'll click on that. So here, when you log in, it'll show you your open assignments, so you have access to the workbook pages. So if I want to open up um, this one, I can scroll down and so you can start writing your animal reporters article you can answer the questions um, all kinds of things you can do um, and then back here let's see um, starfall will take you to another website it'll open up starfall and so you can just explore there are a lot of parent resources in here for the library and books there are parent resources in here with all different activities. So plenty for you to use. Um, enjoy and let us know if you have any questions. Happy learning!